vivid images float before our eyes. Familiar, yet grotesque. These images are not frozen. Light reveals, and perhaps even creates, their movement. Sometimes the light tricks us, suggesting inner life within empty shells. Where does this light come from? What movement does it reveal? The frame itself moves with the herky-jerky motions of a marionette going up, down, right, left, and various combinations. But why? What substance moves these objects? What force turns their wheels? What is the meat in the machine? Suggestive words and images evoke resonant associations without providing specific answers. The dream film ends by quoting the story from which it takes its title and certain locations, including a clothing shop whose shelves conceal a decadent pornographic cornucopia. And even this hidden space yields to secrets more fundamental and fragile. When we first arrived on this street, we met two characters who communicated through flashes of light. Now the light is gone, and the light giver's body delivers its secret. Mere matter, whether raw flesh or rusted metal. The literary street of crocodiles promises pleasures that it can't deliver. The film street is more cruel, crushing the puppet's hope for connection. Despite the dreamer's freedom of movement, he holds no power over his environment. The screen that opens in the beginning closes on him in the end. Objects, movements, and associations the components that coalesce to form this dream crumble into dust. Perhaps the mistake made on the street of crocodiles isn't believing the dream while it unfolds, but forgetting the dream once it has ended. <laughs>